Yo what's up guys welcome to another video today I'm going to tell you some tips and tricks about how to do tandems properly in Kark Street well these tips are most theory based so you can use them in any game anyway without wasting any time let's begin okay this first round is basically a perfect example of a good lead I told my guy to try his best to give the best lead that he can and we're gonna go through it and analyze it well as you can see he's not getting so close to the roundabout and he's not going too wide either he's not brake checking me as well he, he have a consistent speed it doesn't, it doesn't get slower it doesn't suddenly go faster and uh, see there's no, no there was no braking after the jump obviously he braked for the corner that was a good thing so he didn't hit the bars he doesn't risk it and go so close to the wall as well but it doesn't go too inside the thing you have to keep that in mind when you're drifting you shouldn't take the inside when you are leading the line if you are always taking the inside it's just bad you have to leave some room for the person that is following you and uh, see it doesn't go close look at my position and look how close i am to this section and look how the leader is more far from it and that's how it's supposed to be and the reason that i'm going more inside is that i can keep up better and for example if i was leading this and i was here the person that was behind me had to go wider and there wouldn't be much room for him to take position here basically he had to go wider and that could make a gap anyway as you see he goes wide again it doesn't go too close to that it could be a little bit better here he could go wider he had room he has the angle it doesn't send it too much i see a lot of people in situations like this they just send the car as fast as they can because they think oh they just slow down too much you shouldn't do that he did it a little bit but that was all right still as you can see, he's going as wide as he can, he uses the all track, he doesn't take the inside, he goes in the middle, a bit on the back as well, he doesn't go talk too close to that. And that's basically how it's supposed to be. I do also have an example of a bad lead, so we're gonna go through that as well. See, I always have a lot of room to get in his door, and that's a good thing. See, he goes as wide as he can, he touches all the outlines, doesn't go there. And as a leader, you want to be consistent without no brake checking, without no speeding up, without no anything weird, okay? You basically have to be predictable. Okay, this round is an example of a bad lead, okay? Let's go for it. And he slowed down so much at this section. And look, because it's so close to the roundabout, I literally have like no room to get in the door. So I have to go up this section. That's not what we want. Even the people that I'm playing with, they're all doing this. When it's a straight and it's not like a sharp turn or something, they barely have any angle. They think they are drifting because they just don't have any traction. But that's bad, guys. You don't want that, okay? And because it doesn't have a lot of angle, I can't even keep up with him. I have, I have to literally drive or even use nuts to get in his door, okay? Anyway, look. See, he's trying to go too fast. He's in a rush. He's not consistent, not much angle, he's too inside, he has to go wider. See, not enough angle, going too fast, ended up tapping the wall. See, there's no room to get in his door. Even, I'm, even that I'm so close here, it doesn't count as a tandem. See how forward he is? If he was like here, just imagine how bad the tandem would be. See, there's no room. He's literally straight. I have to go straight with him. See, literally driving here. Slows down too much. I had to break him. Break for him. See? See how he sended it so much? He was a straight and he slowed down so much. Now he's literally driving and just... See the gap? See the gap is increasing? And I have to go faster as well. And he messed up my line as well. See, it's a straight. There's barely angle. See, my chase is bad as well. Because the lead is not good, guys. If you can't tandem properly, a lot of time is the person that is leading is bad. I'm doing my best to guide it on his door. Just compare that with the first lap. 
I can't. Because the lead is bad. Simple as that. I just can't. It's like impossible. I'm getting some doors here because it goes wide a little bit. And boom. It goes straight a bit because it didn't rush. Guys, when you're doing a transition, it should be very smooth. It should be slow and smooth. You don't want to flick the car around left and right, left, right, left, right. You have to be very smooth on your transitions. Look, that was okay, but it sent it too much again. See, this is the line you meant to be doing. And one more thing to remember, when you are, when you want to tandem with your friends, you should know where he's about to go, okay? So what I suggest you to do is that using some, having some circles and lines in the map and you that you both know them perfectly. If you think you can do it, you can spend some time and make some circuits and lines for yourself around the map. Send a clip or something to your friends and tell them, yo, practice this map and try to remember it. As long as they remember it, it's good. And it helps a lot, basically. And if you think you can't do them, just look at the lines that I do in my videos. You can, you can, you can just send this video to your friend and tell him to remember this line and just do this together. Too fast, ended up crashing. Okay, okay, the first half of this lap is a bad example of a bad chase not lead okay a bad chase i see a lot of people that can't keep up or they can't get the doors properly first tip that i can give you is uh, you should be always looking at the person that you are chasing you shouldn't be looking much around the track like your main focus like where your eyes should be pointing out is the leader you don't want to look at the turn. Oh, there's a turn. You look at the leader. And also I'm trying to get this gap smaller. So what I do, I just floor it. I just max rub it. Oh my god, I'm pushing the acceleration as hard as I can. But I can't get any closer. He did a slowdown, that's why. Still, I'm full rubbing it. I can't get closer. That's not what you should be doing. And look how wide I'm going. Because I can't do it in sideline. Because I'm on full throttle. Okay. You never want to be on your full throttle, guys. Some of you get surprised. You don't go faster by just putting full throttle. Okay. You have to let go of the gas and get it again. Let go of it and get it again. I would suggest you to keep your RPM between 4.5 and a 5. Basically, and a 5 to a 9 or a 8, basically. Or 8 actually would be better. Depends to your cars though. Some cars have like the max RPM in 7 and 8. And also beside all that, the tune that you are using, it plays a big role in tandem, in doing the tandems. The problem with the tunes is that it's not an easy thing to do. Even that a lot of people are liking my tunes and they are like, yo, your tunes are so good and all that. I still feel like mm, they're not good enough. If you know what I'm saying, there's like, there's always a lot of room for improvement. So, none of the tunes are perfect. You just keep changing it. It's about the style you have. Do you want to drift fast? Do you want to drift slow? Do you, do you play with high angle? Do, do you want a realistic car? Or do you want something that like, it feels like it's driving on ice? You know what I'm saying? So, it's kind of hard to learn how to tune and... It's not easy for me to come here and explain for you guys, oh, to you like this and that. It's just so long and it's so much to understand. I can do that though, but it's just so much and so long and I don't think anyone actually uses it much. I don't know, let me know if you want it or something. And I got closer here because he messed up a little bit, he got a slower and that's my problem right there. See, I shouldn't be going wider when I have room here. My car should be next to him, okay? Your eyes and the point that you want to be should be his front tire. You want to match your front tires to his ones, okay? And one more tip just I can give you. I know there is a tear that's just right there. But what you can do is that you drop back a little bit and not be on his door. And come behind him or even maybe a little bit on the left side. And that helps you to do the transition better. See how I'm on his left side right now? I didn't have to back off or brake or anything. When you are letting go of your acceleration, 
you gain grip and it gives you more speed something that people feel like they have to make a call for grip i think oh they should have like no grip grips makes you go faster see i'm letting go of my acceleration it goes to five and, and goes to a it's between that range and see how better i'm just keeping up just by managing my throttle that's it that was the main issue for me and someone that is chasing you don't want to go too wide sometimes you need to go with less angle to kind of fit yourself there and get into its door it's not as easy that it sounds but just by knowing this you can practice properly guys proper practice makes perfect okay guys you, you can just go around and do like the bad example that i showed you for like a whole year and it doesn't help you a little bit one more thing try to get good with your gear changing and cap them on time at this example because i know i have to slow down after this transition and i also know that my first gear has enough speed range to help me go on his door so what i just did i dropped the gear and see i just gone back to it go on again because i'm slower and i have more power up my car can push itself on its door way better and one one mistake that i could do that touching this line see how the leader is on this line i should i could be on this line right now let's just say what we don't want it to be and i'll say sometimes we just risk it it doesn't matter if you tap on his door it does matter obviously don't do it too much but risk it guys go close if you don't risk it you're not gonna get used to it so I'm taking the inside to make the gap smaller. See, see, I drop back. I'm not going there. See, uh, you have to give the leader room for transition. So every time you are transitioning for a turn, you have to drop back a little bit. Give the leader room. Okay, if you are getting too close, obviously. So, see, so he has enough room to do the transition. If you get so close to him, you just can't. He will be ending up going to the wall. So it's kind of your task to do a good chase as well. See, I went too wide. If I was going same line or a bit something more inside, I could have to keep up and that gap wouldn't be there. Again, I'm taking more inside. I'm managing my throttle. I'm having less angle to get closer. See, I have less angle, maybe like 10 degree, but that's a lot. You just have to keep these points in your mind and just keep practicing. It's not gonna just get good after a day and night. You're not gonna just bang learning. There is no magic trick. There is some tips. Just keep these points in your mind and try to practice them with a friend or something. And most likely, if the leader is doing a good lead and you are following the things that I teach you here, you are probably doing way better at this point. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, see you next time, if you found this tutorial any helpful, like and sub would be appreciate guys, we are getting subs very slowly lately, so anyway, thanks for those who are actually supporting still, see you in the next video and bye bye.